All right, where the hell is this place? I know I went through the Dimwood, and I crossed the teeth of the world, and I thought I was here toward the great northern mountains. But I could be in the north, no, I should, maybe I'm in these woods over here. What the hell is that? Where's it coming from? What the? The Tech. Up and running, yes. So that was a hell of a trip, huh? Yes. Well, you know, you know, you're a little kind of hard to find these days. You know, you could have just found me on the internet like Wendell does. Wendell, what's up? Like, How's what's it up? going, fellas? Cocaine has been out in the snow for two days looking for our secret forest location. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should have used the polonium tag that you know can be found with satellites. Oh well. Yeah. Well, once you get far enough out there, you don't have enough, you know, connectivity to the satellites to, to you know, the network. To ne my, my phone doesn't work like that just yet. I, <laughs> I didn't get the, the satellite upgrade, okay? I've decided we're going to have a lot of fun in this tech. How's that sound? I like this idea. Yeah, let's do that. First off, I want to plug all of our recent videos. We've got the mechanical keyboard guide. If you're looking for a mechanical keyboard, check that out. Hey, and if you guys really want to complain and scream and yell and throw mud at each other, we have got some amazing build videos that are better than a console. In fact, we've got a $350 PC that is better than a console. <laughs> you know how many, I mean, I've, I got some messages with some extremely explicit stuff about this, like, shut up, Logan, screw you, ah! People I need are... you to forward those to me because I'm gonna like start making videos. I'm gonna start acting them out in just all of these things. I'm gonna do that. Let me say something. For all the people that are commenting, I know there's a lot of hate and I don't even care, but uh, for, for the people who are like yelling and screaming that there's no way that a $350 PC is, is better than a console, the only thing you're thinking about and the only thing you've got, most of you guys are talking about in the, in the comments is the fact that there's no way they can keep up graphically. And if you watched the video before you opened your fat mouths, you would hear me say that these cannot compete with the current consoles graphically. I say, however, you know, it's a PC. You can do so many things on it, and that's why it's better. It's a multi-purpose appliance. And then there's the other thing that I think is hilarious. Everyone always like, dude, you're cheating. This is so stupid. You don't include a mouse or a keyboard or a monitor. Well, you know what? When you, when you buy your console, you don't include the TV. Yeah, you where's the TV? The, uh, what else? What you, where's TV, the couch? The couch. You don't include... Um, <laughs> No, there's all that other, all that other stuff you normally consider. I haven't that. bought a new keyboard since 1989. <laughs> <laughs> I find it really hard to believe that all you people have no. It's like, it, like right now, there's like what two computers per household or something like that. You can't find a keyboard in your basement or something. And even if you can't, they're like five dollars on the internet. Like seriously, you can get a rubber dome keyboard and you can start gaming on a PC for five dollars. So everybody, just shut up. You know, not everybody who's going to get into PC gaming is going to buy. You know, uh, you know, one of some of these these great. You know, keyboards that we've got. On the well, yeah, one, one of the guys in the comments want to buy one of those things right off the bat because you don't know what you're doing. Just like you know, you you, you get the you get the controller that comes with your your Xbox, or your PlayStation, and then there's a whole stack of aftermarket controllers that you can buy. But nobody does that because the ones that they come with it are, are fantastic. With the PC, you have the option to get some piece of crap five dollar thing out of a, a bargain bin at a thrift store for all we care. Yeah, I mean, some guys did something to get you into the some into playing with. Somebody it. jumped in the comments and they were like, "Dude, you left out the mouse and keyboard. That's easily a uh, hundred dollars per item." I'm like, what? <laughs> like, sure, okay, well, then that means that he plays PCs, and he's like, because he, he knows what's going on, or he doesn't, and he has no idea what's going you on. You know, we but... have a lot of really awesome accessories. Like, if, if you haven't, if you already have your gaming PC and everything's squared away, then maybe it's time to start thinking about getting some accessories. And there are, like, $100 plus, uh, you know, mice. There's $100 plus keyboards, and there's, you know, headsets like this one. This is a wireless headset, and I actually think it sounds really good. Um, from SteelSeries, but it's like what is that like two or three hundred dollars? Right? This one right now, I think the the price I saw was like three hundred euros. So I don't even think this is available in the U.S. yet. Thanks, SteelSeries, by the way. This thing is fantastic. Yeah, and so there, there are some really like there's like they're like luxury items if you can afford them, go for them. But those are totally separate than your gaming PC, and we make special videos for those expensive or more expensive items or the more luxury items. You know, when you're ready to upgrade, we make videos to help you guys see. It's almost like putting your hands on it without actually putting your hands on it. We put our hands on it for you guys, so you guys can see so that's what we do and that's what our videos are about we're not going to make a video on a two dollar mouse well we might it might be kind of funny but you know I, what i mean i might actually do that i've got a, i've got an old dell ball mouse that i can, can <laughs> why, why the hell not I, I will play games with that and the old dell keyboard and i will 
whoop your ass in it. That's the challenge right there. <laughs> um, I've got a Microsoft IntelliMouse Explorer that is almost okay for gaming. Those are optical. Aren't they like 800 DPI, yeah. though? That's the problem? They're 800 Yeah, CPI, they're, they're right? 800 DPI. It was the first uh, enterprise wireless mouse, actually. A and... lot of people swear by the IntelliMouse, like the shape of it and the fact that it's optical. A lot of people just swear by that. So I have a serial Canable IntelliMouse. Canable? Canable. A serial cable. <laughs> serial cable. I'm sorry. I've been drinking back, water today. Back before cables, there were canables. It's a serial. It's a, I was going to say serial enable. I'm like, that doesn't work. So it's a serial cable IntelliMouse. It, it uh, was one of the first generation mice to have the wheel. Actually, no, I take it back. The one that I've gotten serial doesn't have the wheel. It's just a two button mouse. It doesn't even have a wheel. Hmm. And it's a ball mouse. I will use that and play games. I need to uh, correct something in one of our last videos. Uh, in the Wii placement video, I said to go to dolphinemulator.com or whatever. That website has been hijacked. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, I did my notes probably a bit too quickly on that one, and, and I, 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 yeah, I, like an idiot, I fell for it. So go to dolphin-emu.org to get your copy of Dolphin, and there it is available on Linux. So I wanted to make sure that everyone knows that. If you guys are grabbing Dolphin Emulator, do not go to dolphinemulator.com. It sucks. And people who um, are in charge of that website should be quartered. <laughs> I don't know. I'm with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tech support, we'll put that at the end. And let's get into you drag. There we go. Drag over. All right. What is the first thing to talk about? Two million stolen Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google passwords have been leaked online. And uh, there is a very easy way to tell if you have been compromised. Just go to have I been pwned. Not uh, with a dot com. Yeah. And I'm saying pwned. You guys can yell and scream. I, I, in fact, I enjoy it. But yeah. Have I been pwned? So you just put in your email address uh, and click, you know, pwned, question mark. Do you have a, do you have a throwaway email address you can check? Um, no. No. Maybe they're the ones who actually they, have the uh, the database and they're the ones that stole it all. <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah, basically they do. They, they have copies of everything that has been leaked online. And so I put in some of the really obscure email addresses that I use with the Adobe service. And sure enough, it was like, yeah, this email address has been pwned. And it's because it was part of the Adobe hack. And it's like, damn, that's crazy. You know, I, I got lucky because I had Adobe and all that other stuff. And I changed all my passwords with all that junk because of the Adobe compromise. But I checked all of the accounts that were associated with all that stuff here. And it said nothing had been pwned. That's so amazing. I, I just, maybe I got lucky. The QR code may soon replace the login password. This is kind of an inter interesting thing. I'm going to allow you take it away from here because you can probably uh, explain this better than I can. There's, they're basically saying that you know you may be able to like generate a QR code and just use that for login, so it's something you have and something you know. And, and I think this is because uh, you can print a QR code, and so this is like a ghetto version of chip and pen, but <laughs> I don't really see this taking off. Yeah. I can take a picture of your QR code that you have posted on the wall behind your uh, desk that you use to scan for all of your passwords. Well, every time, the thing is, that every time you go on, it creates a new unique QR code. Okay. It makes a new handshake with your device. But what if someone gets your device, like your Android yeah. or whatever? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, if someone gets your Android device, it's like, hey, I can get into everything with this. So They didn't uh, even get the random number generator right on Android. So, I mean, really, come on now. Yeah. Google has acquired seven robot companies, and they 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 acquired they acquired some of them that were, that are working on like uh, the DARPA contest. Um, they've acquired some that are really really good at uh, human style emotion, not motions, but emotions motions. Um, and they they've acquired some that are like trying to make humanoid robots. Now, couple this together with what they've done over the last couple of years, they've you know they've got Ray Kurzweil right now, and he's involved with their um, artificial intelligence initiative. Could they be possibly trying to move toward an actual Android? No, I think that they're trying to generate the singularity and Google's a giant cult front for it. <laughs> well, DARPA is, is, is basically trying to build robot soldier replacements. You know, they've got, they've got Big Dog, which is, you know, the, the sort of mule robot. But mm -hmm. they've also got the hardware that's like that full robot and some company did the hardware and the hardware is awesome but there's no software for it. And we talked about it last episode, it was like the T100. And so if yep. we can get the software for it, that's when it'll really take off. And so now we're working on the software now that we have the hardware. So what if Google, you know, they've got all this stuff going on and they bring about the singularity. They, they, they actually create artificial intelligence that can fit into something the size of a human being. They, you know, something that can be as intelligent as us and, and or maybe more so and then DARPA gets their hands on it because, of course, Google will probably make it open source. Then well, what would happen? 
I think I think what's going to happen is not really that, but with the whole cloud thing, it's like right now you can run a service on your own local stuff, or you can run it in the cloud. I think that Google is going to be uh, switching like from an ad platform to like cognition as a service. So you can have cognitive functions and intelligence as a service running on these robots, and that Google will never let that code out of the doors. And what if the cloud goes down? Well, then you're you're not going to be able to get to that service. Mm-hmm. Because it's too much. I mean, can you imagine if you had intelligence on call in an API, like figure this out? It would be like a version of Mechanical Turk that doesn't involve people. Um, and and people are now irrelevant. Especially, I'm still, I'm still waiting on the singularity. Google will be renamed to Skynet. <laughs> kind of ro- human robots. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the the the, the robot apocalypse card because that's that's what I see this <laughs> in like. It's, Does it sound like a, a, a fun in some way? I mean, like I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but I mean, think about this. You've got a you've got an API that you can just hand off cognitive functions. You know, here, think about this. Tell me what you know. Figure this out. Figure this out. Figure this out. And then it's going to eventually get to a point where it's going to have enough of those questions, enough information. It's just going to you know become self aware and go, hey, wait, I got all these robots that I have full control over that are just oh wait, DARPA's got a hold of these too. Cool, they have guns. You know what? These guys are really scary. These guys are really scary. Let's make them fight each other. And oh, well, let's just play a game of chess and. Uh, so you, so we'll end up with like a, a version of Ender's Game, but here on this planet. Where no, people I think are you're going to end up with. A, I'm going to think you're end up with a guy like Matthew Broderick who's going to like dial in randomly in a war dialing function and you know start playing geothermal nuclear war. Well, I think it's it's going to be it's going to be uh, you know it's like when we build the robots with the three laws of robotics and you know one of them is you know you shall never harm a human. And at some point, those things are going to interpret that as humans can't be trusted to be left alone because they're going to harm each other. I will intervene. And that's going to be interesting. See, now that's how they went with the movie on that, that thing. But, uh, you know, that's, that's normal. I mean, that, that, there's, so, there's so many uh, dystopian futures that have referenced that as well. So, yeah, we're, why, don't, why can't we just go back to where, you know, we, we spent the hard day work, you know, farming and raising a <laughs> barn or something? Hey, welcome can, to uh, my neck of the woods. Can you imagine the political, like... You know, if you if the current uh, political administration had access to like the Star Wars assassin droids, I mean, can you imagine what that would be like? This is crazy. They don't already. <laughs> All right, <laughs> yeah, but if this technology gets finished. Yeah, let's move on and talk about Microsoft for a minute because Microsoft they've been making fun of Google a lot um, for the whole they've got the whole Scroogled campaign going on, and right now they're coming out and affirming their own. Um, I guess they're, they're, they're saying that, hey, listen, we're going to be a lot better about all this stuff. We're going to harden our network uh, code against government snooping. They're going to you know, install the encryption between the different servers, um, and they're going to fight all of the, uh, the, the gag orders. They're going to go to court and fight to say that, hey, it's our right to come out and say what's going on. It's our right to say how much you guys are snooping, uh, so that they actually want to fight the government. Now, why are they doing this, and, and what are they doing it for? Is it be- I mean, would they be doing this if all these revelations had not come out? Or, I mean, I don't know. What, what, what do you guys think? Well, um, I guess I'll, wait, I'll, I'll get to the next article, and then we'll, then we'll talk about this. So um, Microsoft has classified the U.S. government as an advanced persistent threat. Okay, we got an article here by Violet Blue. She's usually pretty sympathetic towards Anonymous and all that, but she's written this article here. And, now, that's, um, that's, that terminology is very specific. So if you're not sort of in the computer security industry, an advanced persistent threat is a sort of a special term for it's not just like a random virus infection or you know where the virus writer's goal is to get your computers to participate in a botnet an advanced persistent threat is an entity on the other end of the you know on, on the other end of the connection that is targeting you or your organization specifically and they're being as stealthy and tailor made as they possibly can yeah we've got a chart here on the screen that we brought up that explains exactly uh, what uh, a, a, um, an advanced persistent threat is as per uh, system, or semantic. And according to Microsoft, the U.S. government, they haven't come out in so many words and said that, but they you know, have said that they're extremely concerned about the government surveillance of the Internet. Um, a, a lot of this, I think, is because of the press right now, and Microsoft really needs that good press. So... Do you think that they're really, really, really earnestly doing this, or do you think they're? I mean, is this? Are they doing this in the interest of their customers? What are they doing here? Are they, are they trying to sound good? Can you go ahead? I know. I know. I, what you're, I know. I, what you're have, gonna go uh, with this. I have. A, I have a couple of thoughts on this. First, it's like 
did we not recently talk about how we believe that the encryption algorithms that, that are built into like the CPU or all these things are already backdoored? Possibly. Um, and if that's the case, then this is like a, a publicity game of saying, hey, look, we're secure because we've got all this encryption, even though somebody somewhere was fully aware that, that the NSA still has a backdoor to the encryption. And if, if, if that's actually the case. Um, the other thought I had when I was reading this, and this very well could be because I've been playing a lot of Shadowrun recently, but <laughs> this seems like the kind of mentality that would have led to the megacorps kind of saying, oh, look, the government's really kind of useless. You know, you need to work for us, and they're going to expand their horizons, and suddenly you have this corporation that's going to control a hell of a lot more than just, you know, an operating system. They're going to have the operating system. They're going to have other manufacturing pieces. They're going to be, you know, DARPA's going to, like, dissolve. And it's... I just see a dystopian function of that this is... I always thought uh, Skynet was going to be like Walmart, DARPA, and then one tech company like Google, Google. and Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. Well, It'd be kind of fun. Walmart, DARPA, and uh, Google. Yeah, and Skynet. <laughs> yeah. It, it's... Walmart and Skynet. That's just but not good. Now, now, to take away the conspiracy side of things, this is, this is Microsoft trying to come out and saying, look, you can trust us. And I don't trust Microsoft. I've never trusted Microsoft for several reasons that I won't go into right here because I would be... I'm, I'm going to wait and see what happens if they actually go to court uh, and see how that pans out. If they go to court with the government... I mean, they've already been in court with the government a few different times, but I want to see how hard they actually fight this with, you know, in, in court. And, 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 I, and then I, I don't know. It still, still feels like they're doing this just to make the public feel at ease. So, that's, that's, that's I mean, I mean I'm skeptical of Microsoft, I'm skeptical of Google, I'm skeptical of just about anybody that has this much access to our data, as should you be. Anybody that has this much access to your data can use it uh, for good or for bad. I mean, you also got to remember that we've, we've freely given them this access as well. I mean, Zuckerberg, when he was you know, first creating Facebook, was quoted as saying something like, yeah, I just tell these idiots to give me all their data, and they do it. I tell them to you know tell me where they live and what high school they went to and they just give me everything and he was like you know saying it like these idiots are just yeah sure they just give me everything yeah and you know we do we, we freely give all this information to all of these websites and and we, i say freely but at the same time there is a social pressure to use some of this stuff uh you know like facebook like google uh you know in microsoft like if you don't you're not on linkedin Windows, you're not getting a job with us exactly if you don't, you know if you don't have a windows machine you can't play games you can't do this you can't interact oh, with gonna fix the, that soon yeah, I mean, you, you, no, exactly. And, and same thing with Google. It's like if you use Google because it's been that cloud email system for the longest time. It wasn't an isolated email server like you used to have. Uh, Microsoft is in everybody's home and it's in everybody's business. Yeah, it's, I'm using them both and I, I just use them. And with Facebook, you know, everybody's, everybody's got to be socially connected with Facebook. But when you get on there, then it's, okay, well, now that you're here, you, we need this, 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 or otherwise you can't use the service. And if you don't, you get shunned by your friends, especially the younger generation. I ignore shunned. all that stuff. Like I know you do. I do. But it, it's, it's the, that's, that's, that's the reality of it, is that they're, they're playing against that social acceptance function. Well, at any rate, Microsoft stock is at its highest point in many, many years since, uh, God, when? Since 2000. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, Microsoft stock is way up. And this even takes into consideration that they split in 2003. So, yeah, they're, they're doing uh, pretty well. I mean, they're not, like, doing as, as well as Google or Apple or anything like that, but they're doing pretty well. All right, the uh, Snooping and Disclosures article, at and is this, should we, should we talk about this? Is this going to be a long article? What do you think? I thought it was just worth a mention is, like, from the Microsoft perspective, you know, with, with the Microsoft spying, the shareholders are interested in, you know, hey, what are we doing for the NSA? And, you know, can we talk about it? And they're being pretty open with their shareholders. Meanwhile, AT and T, you know, while they're working on better, uh, you know, better data plans, I guess, or better plans for costs. Yeah. They don't want to talk about the NSA spying, even when their shareholders are like, their major shareholders are like, let's form a committee and investigate that. And no, AT and T just totally like, no, no, that let's, idea. let's let's not talk about that. So, that's that's all that is. Now I was going to say we've got like three articles here on Bitcoin. I think we could just. Kind yeah, we could probably talk about these. Roll and talk them all at the same time. These Bitcoin articles. Uh, yeah, the, all the Bitcoin articles are related. It's basically Chinese, you know, the Chinese banks were like, if you want to use Bitcoin, you can do it on an individual basis, but as a banking infrastructure thing, we're not going to support it. Here's the article. The Bitcoin value dropped uh, to like 575. But yeah, it, it's, it, it dropped at like, what, 40% or something crazy like that? It's well, it's, it was like, it uh, it's really volatile. So, yeah. Maybe but, it's a good time to buy. Do you think it's going to go back up to a thousand? I mean, 
it's already come back up a long way, but it's it's been, you know, um, it was really interesting looking at the pattern because it, it looked like somebody had a stop loss around 8.30. And so every time the price would hit 8.30, tons of buy orders would come in and that would send it back up. But then overnight, those buy orders stopped and then it, it sort of dipped to 5.76. And so now when it dips low... Is someone influencing the market with this stuff? Maybe we should... Uh... Yeah, probably... yeah, no, totally. I mean, it's probably like the Winklevoss twins or something who are using their vast <laughs> cash reserves to buy when it hits a certain point because the, they can mess with it. I mean, the yeah, Winkle Vi. Awesome. <laughs> the Winkle Vi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so that's going on with Bitcoins. I think it's also kind of funny that every time something goes uh, weird with Bitcoin, they always say, hey, we're not taking Bitcoin because Bitcoin can be used for bad things as if nobody's ever exchanged money for something bad. Like nobody's ever hired a hitman and given him cash. No one's ever bought drugs with cash. It's like... Anything can be used for good or bad. Yeah. The interesting thing is that if the addresses are public, at least the, the it is very hard to... You can't hide things from the ledger. You can only obfuscate their sources. So, you know, you can create a bunch of transactions and send the transactions through yourself and new wallet IDs and things like that to sort of obfuscate which ones belong to you. But when you buy real, physical, real-world goods with it, like... You know, if you're buying a car or a house or whatever. So this is really good from like a tax standpoint and from like a tax shelter standpoint where companies are, are forcing their stuff overseas. I mean, this is a completely open accounting system if you know where the IDs map to. And so in terms of governments looking to make sure that corporations aren't stealing money or, you know, doing funny accounting to get money offshore to not pay taxes, this would be amazing. If any of you guys want to know how exactly the Bitcoin protocol works, we have an article here. It's going to be in the uh, the link in the description. We'll take you to our website. We have a list of all of these articles. You guys can check that out. I know a lot of people ask, like, how does this work? I don't even know. If you guys have no idea, just check that article out. Um, it's There's also a Lamborghini dealership in Newport yep. Beach that's taking Bitcoin, for example. Somebody bought a Model S, a Tesla Model S with Bitcoin. That's kind of cool, actually. Now I wish I'd started buying up Bitcoins back when they were, you know, you know, we on like day one, we were mining these things, and then we both ended up moving around the city, and we had laptops and broken hardware, and it was just like not a good time. If if the Bitcoin thing started right now, we'd probably be gazillionaires because we'd have the means and the you know, and all that to do it. Damn you, time! But we were actually trying to mine bitcoins from like laptops back. I remember we were in New well, York. I think I think we had like two or three laptops that were doing that. Just on, whenever we weren't using them, they were mining. We had a couple of systems when, uh, when we Well, were... I had a really nice desktop, but it was destroyed by the UPS. And at that point in time, I had like, I had zero dollars. So I had no way to replace my desktop and UPS would not help me at all. They were like, screw you, dude. That was basically the response. Like, I was like, I got insurance. It's broken. Here it is. And they were like, yeah, take us to court. Thanks. I was like, wow. So anyway, um... I'm so gonna we're, skip. Not, we're, we're not really bitter about the whole Bitcoin thing. No, not at all. <laughs> well, well, we got we'll, we'll figure out something else. Yeah. Uh, Wendell, have you seen the time? Oh dear, is it rant thirty already? It is rant thirty. So the FCC chair, the uh, the very newish FCC chair, Tom Wheeler, he was at Ohio State, right? And they were asking questions about uh, data hogging. Like someone in the audience was like, "Hey, dude, um, I'm I'm totally paraphrasing this, but I hope I catch the essence of it." But someone in the audience was like. Dude, uh, what about all these data hogs like Netflix? Should they have to pay for all that data that they're hogging up? And should they have to pay the ISPs? And he can, he said um, that he thinks that you know some commercial agreements should be made and that possibly Netflix should be paying the ISPs. No. He's no. been backtracking since then. He's no. been backtracking. But he said it in direct response to that question. And he's been, now since then he's been trying to spin it and say, I wasn't talking about you know that. I was talking about something else. But... He said it in response to that question, so I'm going to attack based upon that. Okay, so I want, I want to let you guys kind of say your, your piece on this, and then I, I, have, I have a different perspective on this that I, uh, I, I can see where he may have been trying to go with this, and I'll, I'll play devil's advocate with you guys just because I, I want right, to get right. that aside. Because I think he may have been going this direction, but I still agree with what you said on all of this. All right, I'm, I'm going to scratch the surface, and then I'm going to let Wendell uh, bring us an analogy that's going to get a little bit deeper. Is that all right? So yeah. here's, here's me scratching the surface. All right, so here's the way this works. Right now, you pay for the data that comes to your house. You've got Comcast. Let's just say Comcast or Time Warner. I'll keep saying both just so one of them doesn't get pissed off at me. So you've got Comcast or Time Warner, and you're paying 100 bucks a month for the data to come to your house. You're also paying separately for Netflix, right? And Netflix is being delivered on the bandwidth that you are currently already paying for with Time Warner or Comcast. It's coming to your house. It's totally separate. 
and Netflix is just an internet service that you're using with your already existing bandwidth that you're getting separately. So um, Netflix accounts for a lot of the bandwidth and Time Warner or Comcast say, hey, listen, Netflix, we want you to pay us as well for all this bandwidth that you're using up, even though the people at home are already paying for it. But we want you to pay for all this extra bandwidth. So they are allowed to do this and they charge Netflix a, you know, a lot of money. Netflix, look, Netflix has pretty low prices, but they look and they're like, oh, damn, in order to make this happen, we are going to have to raise our prices. So all the money that Comcast or Time Warner or Verizon asks Netflix to pay, they transfer onto you and you have to pay more for your internet or for, more for, for Netflix. Here's what's really going on. You're paying twice for the same bandwidth because you're paying for the extra bandwidth to Time Warner, Verizon, or Comcast, plus you're paying for Netflix, and plus you're paying for your bandwidth already. So you're paying them twice. Yes. Now, you, Wendell, we'll let Wendell go deeper right now. So Wendell, are you ready for your? You ready to go deeper on this? Yeah. So it it really it, it doesn't even okay. So when you look at it, the cable companies are delivering you cable television and cable internet. And the cable internet, you know, you pay, you know, you get a 50 meg package, and that is a measure of bandwidth, how fast you can get the data. And there's not really a cap on the amount of data that you get, unless, like, you're, you're with Comcast or Time Warner or, you know, pretty much every other major cable ISP, and then your cap is, you know, 200 gigs or 300 gigs or 500 gigs a month. And so they're specifying in the, in the package plan how fast you can get data, and how much data you're going to get. And so you pay a monthly service fee for that. And that monthly service fee is high enough to cover your internet connectivity, your uh, the infrastructure costs that it costs those companies to maintain the lines, and that sort of thing. At the same time, those same lines that deliver uh, your internet subscription also deliver cable television. And so what we'll, we're really, you know, with, with digital cable TV and cable internet, what's really the difference? Well, you look at, at digital internet and it's like you make a request, like your computer goes out to the internet, makes a request of a server, and the data is delivered back to you. That's a request. But with cable television, except for pay-per-view and some other exceptions like that, the data is coming to your house constantly, whether you want it or not. So, you know, if your set-top box can tune in 200 channels, the cable company streaming 200 channels to your cable box and all your neighbors and everybody at the same time the data is coming to your your cable box whether or not you want it there's nothing you can do about it it's just always there and so it seems a bit weird that they're saying that netflix with their video delivery services would have to pay more because in the cost you're already paying for the bandwidth they specify how much and how fast so what what is the cost that the isp really has the only other cost that it could possibly be is that last mile delivery, delivery on the internal ISP's network. But clearly that doesn't cost anything because they stream television services to you all the time, whether or not you want them. If you could turn on, like if there was a cost associated with that, do you think that they would stream that to your television the whole time? No, it's, it's just, it's, it's always there. It doesn't make sense. So what you're saying essentially is that they're discriminating uh, based upon the fact that they have no control over Netflix and they make no money directly off of Netflix. They don't. Maybe if Netflix plays a video on your machine, they're not getting a cut of it. But they right, do make exactly. money off of the cable TV. So they're discriminating against the the platform. Yes, and they would like to discriminate with the platform because they're marginalized. See, they want to provide content and delivery with net, and that is a real issue. With Netflix, they're providing delivery, but they're not providing the content. And so, in order to make Netflix more unattractive to the consumer and their own offerings more attractive they've got to sort of sour the milk with netflix as it were uh before you jump in and kane's going to jump in here and play devil's advocate before he does that i want to lower the lights a little bit can you help me out with the lights it's getting a little dark i just want to lower that one just a little if possible about probably like three or four months ago we we talked about uh the fact that i think it was comcast specifically or it might have been time warner and they were they were yelling at that about Cogent, right? Yeah, about Cogent and having the, the lines into Netflix and that they wanted uh, they wanted this bandwidth to increase and they were they were getting that line saturated and Cogent was like, well, you can just, you know, buy more lines from us and Time Warner was like, uh, no, Netflix should be buying lines from us or Cogent should be, somebody else should be paying for this because I mean, our customers, we're, we're already serving it to the customers but this, this connection between Time Warner and Cogent where Netflix servers sit, that's what was getting saturated. Their, their link and they, they were like somebody needs to buy more stuff so what I think the additional cost of, of, of 
delivering that stuff uh, without you know having a difficulties is somewhere in that link in that I think Time Warner wants Netflix to purchase bandwidth from Time Warner and then hone their stuff to their network as well so then they have this dedicated line into Time Warner's network in which case again it's the same same scenario you're describing so you're where, cutting out cogent then well not not so much cutting out cogent but in addition to cogent's bandwidth you should be able to you know have the time warner stuff and that's what i think time warner wants the and then they can make some kind of finagly deal where they're like oh we'll prioritize your bandwidth to delivery yay um, and when you and say time warner you mean verizon time warner Comcast, verizon everybody time, right? well, i'm just saying specifically there was there was that that, that argument was that then. was going on back yeah. then and i think that's kind of where this this is coming from and the fact that the fcc is like this guy is saying you know this i think that well, what you guys are saying is correct, and I think that he spoke that because that's something that's going on in his head. But from the other side, I think that's partially what he was trying to say is that Netflix, as a service provider, could purchase bandwidth from other locations. Now, at the same time, I don't need to connect Time Warner, Comcast, Verizon to my home so I can get the best possible network connection to different networks. That's not how the internet's really supposed to work. So the fact that Netflix is buying an, a, a large ton of bandwidth through Cogent, they're buying their bandwidth through Cogent, and it's getting delivered to wherever Cogent has peers with, which is everywhere. And if Time Warner's like, hey, wait a minute, we're going to start disabling and like deprioritizing your ban Netflix bandwidth, that right there is them playing you know a bad foul game and I, I think that well this guy's talking about Netflix to pay the ISPs or work out some kind of arrangement I think that's what he was meaning by it but the fact that he said it the way he said it in the manner that he said it in response to the question either he's off in his own little world not really paying attention to the people or he's got something else going on well, in his head you know let's thinking. remember something this guy used to be a uh, lobbyist before he became chair of the FCC he was a lobbyist for the cable and wireless industries so there is, there is that. So like I said, that's where I think his mind is coming from. It's like, let's work out some kind of business arrangement. I don't think that they specifically meaning that they're just going to charge Netflix and use the existing stuff. I think it would be that Netflix, they want to encourage Netflix and they want Netflix to purchase additional bandwidth through these other ISPs and multi-home their network so that they are more well-connected and they're not just going through Cogent because that's actually, that, that link is costing everybody else a bunch of money and Cogent's just going... You guys can buy additional links to us. These guys have bought this much bandwidth, and they're using you know, 80% of their, their allotment. So they're not doing anything wrong, and they're not going outside of their bandwidth range. But Time Warner's like, oh, but we only have this you know, 20% of what they're using on our network. It's like, well, maybe you should buy additional lines from us. And that's where the whole, who's, who's going to pay for what, where, and how is this road going to get built, and oh, my God, and then it's... I'm, I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to end with a very simple statement that pretty much ignores everything we've just said, but, but ties it all in. But I think that the ISPs would love to be able to discriminate against other you know, services that provide uh, entertainment content because they have, such a, you know, a, they have such a stake in the entertainment world as well as the, uh, the content delivery world. So I think they would love to be allowed to discriminate, and I really do not trust Wheeler. I think that he may be helping them. Uh, undo a bit of the net neutrality that the FCC already stands behind. I, that's what I think is going to happen. I think he's going to try to help them erode net neutrality. Yes. And, I and then, I think they, that, then they'll have fair game to do anything they want. Yeah. I think that to add to that, you have to look at the pattern of behavior here too. Because we've got Google, and Google I think very publicly is setting up these things you know, in Kansas City and Provo and things like that with gigabit fiber speeds and offering video and entertainment services through their own connection. And we see a pattern of behavior from the cable industry that is undermining those efforts. You know, in, in I think it was North Carolina, they're lobbying really hard to pass laws to make it basically impossible for Google to go out there. And Google, uh, Google is on record as having said they will not enter a few markets in certain states because of the regulatory issues. The regulatory issues for providing telephone service, well, the, you uh, know, digital telephone service, is also another exception that they've gone on record as, as saying is this, this, the incumbents have basically written the laws for their infrastructure, and it doesn't make sense. Right, and in and, uh, and a lot of those areas you're talking about, they're not even really allowed to have locally owned uh, providers. It's it's like illegal. You have to have AT&T in this section. You have to have Comcast if you live in this zip code, and that's like a mandate from above. It's Le it's like illegal to have anything else. It's weird. It's like legal monopolization. Yeah. The, the problem like that it. we have is that the government is not intelligent enough to manage a fox that lives in the hen house already. <laughs> that's that's the, because that's just a bad idea to begin with, but it's already the there. Best so way let's, to put hey, look at that, a squirrel. That, that's the best way to put it. A fox that's <laughs> living in the hen house and the government is just like, 
Oh, he wants to eat more hens. Should we let him? Yeah, well, he can eat all of them. Hey, wait what a minute. Them? There's another fox that wants to get into this hen house. There's going to be no eggs No, left. we can't do that. He's already in there. At the end of this game is there are no eggs and no chickens. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the the end of this game is that you're, you're you know, you, every ISP basically becomes like AOL. Like, you can get to all the stuff on AOL for free, but when you want to go to the internet, you're going to be nickel and dime to death to get you to not go there. It's going to be you know, what dial-up systems were before the internet. So we're going backwards. Well, we want to know what you guys think. So let us know in the comments, preferably on our website, because everyone on YouTube seems to be stupid these days thanks to Google Plus's new comment system. I'm not angry at all. Let's move on and talk about hardware. Please. <laughs> if only the customers weren't using the service they pay for, we would be making all this money. Yeah. <laughs> Dell, they've introduced a, a 4K monitor. It's like 27, 28 inches, 1,000 bucks. That's so much cheaper than all the other decent 4K monitors out there. Of course, you can get one of those cheap 4K television sets, but this is an actual 4K, you know, real deal monitor. You know, you can get an 87 inch 4K Samsung for forty thousand dollars. Do you know how big those pixels are going to be? <laughs> and forty thousand dollars, we're going to where we're going to put that thing in the bathroom. That's where I'm going to put. I it. really just want to get one so I can uh, watch the garbage guy try to take the box away. Uh, you know, I started thinking about getting one of these 4K. Um, things but then i started thinking again and i was like well you know what the way i play skyrim right now with all the mods and stuff it barely runs on a 780 ti so i would probably have to play that game like either stretched 1080p or windowed 1080p and on a monitor like that it's going to be like a tiny little box in the middle of the screen that i'm gonna have to like look at yeah, that or you just have to downsize it to, uh, you know, you'd have to, to change the resolution of the monitor down to 1080p, in which case... Uh, it wouldn't be that bad. The pixel picture, I mean, the, 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 pixel, the, the uh, pixel size would still be big enough, I think, or small enough that it would look pretty good. I yeah, no, it would probably look nice and crisp, but you, like I said, you're going to... You have the monitor for future... I mean, it's... So, by the time you have a graphics ca card that's capable of p driving it at that full resolution, you're going to be, be able to spend half that much on the same monitor. Yeah, I totally don't care. I want the pixels. And don't forget that because this is an even multiple of 1080p, you can still run it at 1080p with no um, sort of anti-aliasing at the monitor level. It'll still maintain that sharpness. Okay, so it should, I mean, it should be good. Just just get it for productivity. Use it for Adobe Premiere and audio editing and that sort of thing. And then when you jump into your games, play them at 1080p. Or so or 1440p will be a little rough looking, but 1080p will be really nice looking. So you it's even better. A, you could do it. Well, you could do it. You could do it. Let's see, it's 1920. I guess that would be 4K. It would be double, double size as a 4K, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Intel. Now, now oh, we do ahead, have sorry, the Seiki 4K that we're still working on. However, the LCD panel itself apparently has some sort of uh, blending built in because the test pattern pixels bleed over into adjacent pixels, and we're not really sure why. But someday we'll, we will have a really cheap 4K monitor. I'm not, so, I'm not sold on those 4K TVs uh, from Seiki. <laughs> yeah, they're not. They're they're pretty terrible. The Dell stuff should be much better, but maybe the Dell thing means that we can have cheap Korean panels. Yes. Hey, that's what I was gonna say. It's like, who's actually making the who's actually making the, the hey. Dell panel? 4K X Star, maybe. Hey, how about that? <laughs> yes. Uh, Intel. They've got a, an SSD coming out, two terabytes. The roadmap has been leaked, and it looks like we're gonna have some two terabyte um, SSDs. Oh, no SSDs. Yeah. That's what I said. I'm, I'm right. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, MSATA as well. They're, all, they're also going to be MSATA, right? Yes. Also MSATA. Because they're going to be... Um, yeah, that's going to be cool. I, this I is want, because oh. of the ridiculous flash de density. I would love an MSATA, 2 terabyte, on a laptop. I'll pay double right now. I need it. Oh, you're going to pay double for that. I mean, yeah, you're going to pay double. It's going to be like 2 grand at minimum. If not, it's going to be like 8 grand. Yeah. But that's kind of cool to know that that's uh, coming out soon. Um, Pixel, they've developed a, a, a steam machine. It's called a Jetpack, Jetpack Steam Machine. Now, this, kind of, this is kind of interesting. You know what it looks like? It looks like a horizontal drawer from a server tray or something. Or server. It looks like a server tray you just pull up, nice. doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you've got you look at the cooling solutions and all that sort of thing. And even the power supply, that's a, that's a server power supply right there. So this is going to mount right on the back of your television set, and it's going to be pretty much invisible and uh, decently powerful. That looks like a, an okay graphic card in there. I'm not sure of the exact specifications, that's a thousand bucks, and it's going to be a Steam machine, right on your monitor. And there remember, guys, Steam machines use the Steam OS, which is Linux. So you'll be running Linux and not Windows. Sweet. Which is really going to, you know, hopefully, push most developers to start making their new games for Linux and porting their older games over to Linux. That looks kind of cool. I really don't care about. It. I, I have a hard time even caring about 
television stuff because I don't have a television. So if it's yeah. something you guys are looking forward to, let me know. All right, what else we got here? IBM's electronic blood. So couple this together with what Google is doing, and we may actually have robots that bleed. Okay, so this is just going to go straight in, and I'm going to go to the uh, Battlestar Galactica <laughs> right there. I'm just going to go there, and I'm going to leave it right, right there on the Battlestar Galactica. Well, check this out. This 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 red this, they, 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 the uh, red flow system, it pumps the electronic blood, and that brings like energy and all kinds of things to different parts of of the uh, robot. Yeah, Cylon. They're they're trying Cylon. to they're trying to build something like a human brain because the human brain right now is ten thousand times more dense and efficient than the computers today. So when you really think about you know like Watson versus the the other guys in Jeopardy, it's not fair because Watson is using like. Uh, 10,000 times more power. <laughs> 2 million watts versus 20 watts. Yeah. So yeah. Th this this is kind of like th they're trying to move towards something that is more like a brain and less like a computer. And I don't know, IBM, they, they could be the ones to do it. Well, they have been kind of... I, I think IBM may end up figuring out the uber low power... Um, you know, computer stuff before Google and, or anybody else does. Do you remember what IBM actually stands for? International business, business machines? machines? What if they upgraded it to intelligent business machines? <laughs> well, there you go. And uh, I or would say that Stanley Kubrick agrees with you, Logan, as evidenced by HAL in 2001. Yeah. Yep. Uh, maybe, maybe it's going to be intelligent bionic man. It's not Kubrick. It's um, who wrote that? Um, Kubrick did the movie, but um, who wrote oh, the book? Oh, yeah, that's right. Arthur C. Clarke. Yes, Arthur C. Clarke. Thank you very much. Arthur C. Clarke wrote the book. You know, Peter Higgs of, yeah. you know, of the Higgs boson. Of the Higgs boson. He's really, you know, he's, he's ancient like Yoda. And uh, um, he is looking around at academia and saying that, you know, I'm basically unemployable. And he talks about how even in the 1980s that his, his research was just so esoteric and so plodding that had he not been no no nominated for a Nobel Prize in the 80s, he felt like he would have been sacked from the university that he was working at. And how the university climate now is for people to crank out papers and blah, 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 but it's a lot of fluff and it's not a lot of real hard science. And I thought that was interesting because I know some people in academia, you know, certainly, you know, not like Peter Higgs type people, but people that are working in academia and, and, it, and it really does seem to be sort of a, a churn and sort of a short-term interest and corporate interests and where's our grant money coming from type situation. And, yeah. And here's an example of somebody that's working on intellectual pursuits for purely intellectual reasons. You know, I'm, I'm wondering how much that really will affect um, the overall grand scheme of things because I feel like there are some individuals that are inspired and those inspired individuals Maybe they're maybe they're not affected by the the grind of having to go to school and crank out papers and that sort of thing. Maybe they they sort of hover above it, or maybe they get bored and leave and go do things in a basement laboratory and still come up with the inventions. I don't know. Do you think do you think it's detrimental? Uh, do you think it's stopping some uh, geniuses from becoming uh, true you know true geniuses and reaching their full potential? Do you think it's doing that, or do you think that they are going to be able to uh, go on and make their discoveries despite this? No, I think I think anecdotally. That we've got a lot of evidence because there are a lot of stories in the news and I personally know a lot of people that you know would they're working in in business and they're working in industry and you know in some cases there was the mathematician who uh, had the twin primes conjecture a few weeks ago and he was doing you know he was just I don't, can't remember what his day job was and it was you know it was it was not something that was uh, toward working on the twin primes conjecture and then you know he he published the paper and you know all of a sudden other mathematicians at other universities were like we've never heard of you you know what do you do for a job and he's like well you know i i work on computers or i fix email or whatever and they're like uh why don't you apply <laughs> for a job in our university so i don't i think that it's already happening that way i mean there there are a lot of in this climate uh, at least it's at least certainly in america you know it's difficult to find a job. And so if you have a job and you have a reasonably okay job, you're probably going to be doing whatever that is as opposed to something for purely academic or intellectual pursuits. Yeah, you got, you got to battle through the, the nonsense and battle through the bureaucracy and battle through the BS. And You also have to make sure you're eating every day. Hence the reason you end up with a job, you spend a lot right. of time doing this. So, no, I think, I think it is. I think it is a point where uh, that the, the doing something 
for the purely intellectual reasons, I think there's a lot of a lot of people out there that are being snuffed out and, and shut down because they, they get bombarded with making sure they can eat every day and ha- you know going to work and working on all these other problems and they get home at night and they're just mentally taxed to the point where they don't want to do anything. Uh, you know, above and beyond, they just get stuck into that grind. And they, if, they, if they can function in the grind and still do above and beyond, that's great. But there's also that's like the only way. I mean, that's why that's how Wozniak, you know, helped build Apple. He was working all day in the grind and then moonlighting. And you know, I read his book recently or uh, last year, and he went on and on about like how important it is to moonlight on your own projects, oh, and absolutely. while you're still working for someone else, okay. if, if you have you know um, aspirations. Yeah, no, I guess it's the same. I think that there, in this day and age, I think there are some people who have these aspirations, but they don't know how or what avenues to take. It's like, you know, you go back to the 80s, you can go down to Radio Shack and buy pieces. Not not of anything, just pieces. Yes, yeah, a bunch of transistors Components, and resistors stuff and capacitors. That you, yeah, and... that you could then take home and go like, what happens if I plug this into this and this and this and this, and bam, look, I've got a television. Or I've been electrocuted. Or I've been electrocuted. <laughs> but, you know, but you can do that and you can learn that. Nowadays, you go in and you buy a kit and you, you don't, getting those extra things, you can still do it, but you need to know how to do that. And it's very difficult to, you know, just wander around in certain places and do it. Like, I, I've, I, nowadays, I get all of my, my components on eBay. You because there's to. people who buy them in mass bulk. We're like, well, we only need 5,000 of these and we've got another 5,000. Let's just sell them at 500 500 uh, units per bag and sell them for 10 bucks. Well, you know, you also have Adafruit now, which is way better than Radio Shack ever was. So if you really want to go out there and grab the different components and that sort of thing, you have Adafruit. And that's like, I mean, you, you can get just about anything on Adafruit as far as building your so own like, I didn't even know this existed until just two seconds ago. You've been working too much, see? Exactly, that's my you've point. Been, you've been grinding. All and then I'm like, I'm like, where do I go? And I don't know where to look. I don't even know how to look for some of this stuff anymore. Because well, I'm, like, I'm just going to take a nap. Well, like last night, you were like looking at all this stuff on the motherboard and you're like, damn, it's been like five years since I built a computer. Yeah. And because you've been building networks and phone systems for other people other than yourself. Yeah, I've been, I've been you know, I've been putting the servers in the, the racks and, and configuring them to talk to that one, to talk to that one. I haven't been building my own computer. I'd get a laptop. It's just, you know, there's a laptop. It's all in one. It's, it's to, whatever. And, you got and it. I don't have to think about what, what I need to put in there. It's not that I can't figure it out. It's just that I haven't done it in five years. Yeah. Let's I would move love on. to be working on cognitive robotics, but there's just no time. So there, you, you're a prime example of that. Who knows? You might be able to be, you might be the guy who just, you know, make the singularity. Yay. Look at, look at this kid from Nottingham. So there's a lot of scams going on right now with the Xbox uh, One. And some of them are pretty funny. I can't believe people fall for this. On eBay, people are buying, I think so one guy, I think it was on Craigslist, bought, a, bought an Xbox or a PlayStation 4, and he ended up getting a bag of, to- or a box of towels. And then this guy goes online and pays 450, uh, that's pounds, for an Xbox One picture, a picture of an Xbox One. And what's even funnier is he read it and, and thought to himself, well, that's funny, it says picture of an Xbox One, but he thought, oh, there's no way. The price is right, and he bought it. He read it. He read it, and it said picture. It said clearly that it was just a picture. And the guy sent him this picture, and on the back of it signed it. Thanks for your purchase. What a jack out. Well, he got what he he got what he paid for. Well, that's true, but still, I mean, the fact that people are like, here's a photo. It's like they know what they're doing, and they know why they're doing it. They're not, they may very well be putting in the fine print, not an actual Xbox One. Only a photograph will be sent in crap inkjet paper that's missing the blue ink <laughs> and then he bought it anyway and, and look at the other thing that's kind of funny on 4chan on, on freaking b raw or <laughs> the same freaking um, part of 4chan that convinced a ton of people to dump their iphones in water they are now convincing people to brick their xbox ones and what they're doing right now is everyone wants backwards compatibility they're like well, i can't play my old xbox games on my Xbox One, I can play my old PC games on the PC, Master Race, all that kind of stuff. Um, but they, you know, they're giving them like a list of things to do, like hey, do this and hold down A and B, then put in this uh, this code, and then voila, you can play your Xbox games on your Xbox One. Bricks the Xbox. A lot of people fell for it. Xbox dead. I want to get an Xbox One just so I can brick it now. <laughs> Don't spend that much money just to brick the damn thing. I'll, it's better than spending that much money and getting a picture of one. Yeah, it would be more fun than, well, I don't know. I'd rather just not have one. Well, there is that. Speaking of old PC games, the, the Might and Magic uh, games. I uh, loved those games. Those, those were really cool games. They were sort of a precursor to the Elder Scrolls. Um, they, came, they were like similar to Ultima Online. People have no idea what I'm talking about. Very similar to Betrayal <laughs> at Krondor. I love that game, too. Yeah, I, I wonder, uh, I don't know anything about that game. 
Hmm. No. Um, but no, this uh, Might and Magic. I, I really like the Might and Magic series. I mean, they made like what, like eight of them before they just kind of yeah. s- disappeared. And well, I guess nine because this is part ten. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, they're making another one, and it's in early access, and you guys can check it out if you're interested in like a nice hardcore PC role playing experience. Um, it's looks like it's going to be really pretty, but it is grid based. Like you're moving in a three D world, but you're moving one square at a time, similar to. Um, and that's, uh, that's how that game has always been. Yeah, well, actually, I think some of the older versions you can move around a little bit more than that. Um, some of them, I I'm think it was sure. like six or seven you were able to do that, but it didn't. It didn't have the same. Didn't have the same feel to the game, and it, 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 it lost eight. interest in it. Yeah, well, this is over. Peggy so eighteen. Closing that because the weekend is over. Um, let's see here, and the last thing we're talking about is um, Nintendo. Their sales are sucking. What the hell is wrong with them? We have the uh, one of the, uh, the the former head of THQ saying that Nintendo needs to just stop with the hardware, stop trying to sell hardware, and they need to be making software for the other consoles. I think they should be making software for the PC because the Wii uh, remote works just fine on my PC. If they could make that, I would buy it, and I would play Zelda because I think Zelda's fun. I'm not, you know, I, I, don't, I don't care about the uh, philosophy of consoles. Uh, I think, I think in, a, in a perfect world, there would be an Xbox platform, there would be a PlayStation platform, and there would be a Wii platform, just like Steam and Origin, and uh, you know, you play or whatever on the PC, and we would be able to, you know, build our own systems or you know, buy a system from them that's like a Steam box, but it's a you know, designed specifically for whatever the hell they got. I would, I would, I would be okay with that. And it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be locked. It wouldn't be a locked piece of. You no, know, walled gardens are uncool. I'm, I'm totally uncool with uh, walled gardens. And you know, dollars th- to donuts. Some major company buys Nintendo. And it'll probably be like Apple or Sony or Microsoft or somebody like that. And then the whole catalog of Nintendo games will be on whatever platform that is. Well, but if Apple is smart and Nintendo's willing, Apple buying Nintendo, that could be really interesting. You know, That they, would make me cry. Yeah, I know, because then we will have to have OS X to play any of the, the Nintendo games. No, I'm thinking about like iPad and iPhone. Like you've got the, oh, the controller right. accessory for the iPhone, and that's by, that's like the Wii U control. And then you've got an iPad with the stand for like the Wii U or the TV or whatever. I mean, it's a comparable amount of horsepower in those devices. I can't see the Nintendo handheld systems going away because they're so popular, and they make a yeah, ton of money true. on their Nintendo store. Maybe and that's that. maybe that's what's going to happen. They're going to pull like a the same kind of thing that Sega did. They're just going to drop their consoles off, and they're going to go portable. I mean, the other option. Now I, I'm I'm kind of partial to Nintendo. I mean, everybody always you know talks about the you know Nintendo kind of what's going wrong here, and I think a lot of the problem is that the gaming industry as a you know as gamers started in the early '80s with this console generation, because before that you had arcades, and you'd go to the arcade and you played an arcade. You had a big machine that was wasn't going anywhere. You dump quarters into it, and then you get into these you know Nintendo, Sega. And Atari had all of these, you know, ColecoVision. All these things were, were were coming into your home. And as we've kind of grown throughout the years, we're all growing up. We're moving on to the PC. But as PCs are getting more powerful and more easier to use with a lot of this stuff, people and are... also uh, fewer headaches. I mean, that's the thing that kept a lot of people away from the PC for a long time. There's just like a lot of headaches. Now, the headaches are still there, but they're they're. There are fewer headaches, and you still have headaches on consoles as well. So it's not it's not as bad. There's still more headaches on the PC, and more troubleshooting, and yeah. more driver issues, and that sort of thing. But it's not as bad as it used to be. But I, I think the gaming industry and the gaming community as like a whole, not not to say PCs versus consoles, just just people who play games. Everybody from the the three year old all the way up to you know the guy who's like eighty five, and he's like, yeah, I'm still kicking your ass at Quake. <laughs> happened the other day. It was pathetic. Uh, I was pathetic. It was bad. Uh, anyway, but you know, I mean, the, the you get kids these days, and kids aren't being given Nintendo to play Mario Brothers. They're being given an iPad or a, a or a tablet, and they're playing Minecraft on a tablet. Yes. I guess you can. Yeah, they, you know, they're playing Minecraft on a tablet, and they're no longer you know, the, or they're getting the 3D. They're getting you know the, the handheld devices and playing these games. But even then, a lot more parents these days, I think they're they're giving them more educational tiled games like like Minecraft as a as a is is this open world here? Here's digital Lego. Let's you know knock yourself out. Right. I think it's I think it's just the, I think the industry is completely changing, and Nintendo has always been a family family uh, family entertainment system. I'm not exactly sure where the industry is going to go overall, but I do think that this is the last generation of consoles and the standard, you know, box that looks like a VCR on top of your television. I think this is the last generation of that. Um, and I think a lot of people even in the industry would agree with me, and I think a lot of it's going to become more platform and device type stuff. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. That's just my prediction. 
I don't know. What do you think, Wendell? Like everything's going to talk to each other. I think that Nintendo sort of sees that, and that's why they already tried to do the thing that they did with the Wii U, where you can play on the handheld thing with the screen, and it's got the TV interaction. Yeah. I think they can sort of see the writing on the wall, but it'll it, it'll probably go portable, or it'll probably go to another platform. I mean, like hardware platform. Like I could see. I don't. I don't think PC. I would really like for it to go to the PC side, but I think that Apple, with their App Store and their closed ecosystem of hardware, if the Nintendo software platform were available on that on that hardware or something like that, I mean, Microsoft could do it too with the Xbox or Sony with the PlayStation. Um, I think something like that is going to be more attractive to Nintendo from a business standpoint. And I've been really getting into Zelda lately. I really wish they would come over to PC. That would be so nice. But I, I was angry at it for a while, and I finally figured out that I need to sit halfway across the room, and now it's perfect. Because I was sitting like right up on top of my computer, like where I normally sit playing my games. I'm like, why does this stupid motion thing not work? And then I tried it like a couple days ago, and I have to be like, if I'm halfway across the room, it works beautifully. So, well, that's why I, Nintendo designed for the thing to be for you for you to be up in a mountain. But it works so well on a PC. I wish they would just like move their their platform over to a PC or Android or something. I don't know. Well, anyway. I think the the I think what you're getting frustrated because you're trying to play a Wii game like you would be sitting at your PC. So if you actually just yeah. dumped your chair completely and stood across the room, I mean, that's what I did. Yeah, you got the 27 inch shimmy, so it's not like you're. Uh, yeah, I just walked across the room and, and I could see go. the thing. And then you're still fine. gonna have the Wii experience, but you're still playing it on the computer, which yeah. would be fine. Nintendo, take notes. With better graphics, yeah. Open GL turned it up to 2560 by whatever, and turned on a bunch of filters and anti-aliasing, and it looks way better. Because I, I still think Nintendo makes some of the best games ever. Like I, Nintendo as first a party games, game. Metroid, Zelda, Metroid. Mario. Yeah, they're fun fantastic. games. Fantastic, they're absolutely fantastic, and they've stood the test of time. And that's, I mean, I, I I can't deal with the exclusives on most consoles, but the Nintendo consoles, I I, I like the exclusives a lot. I mean, that's one thing that sells systems, but I, it's not going to make me buy. Well, I actually did buy. A, I bought a Wii on like fifty bucks used, so just because I wanted the Wii Wii remotes, that's why. Yeah, I, and I, I was looking at uh, I was looking at the game stuff. They're like forty bucks for a, a Wii remote. Yeah, I mean, like when it gets down to that price, it's like I almost can't, I, I almost can't justify it because I really want to play those games. It's like, hey, people are gonna be like, oh, you console sympathizer, so I'm like, give me your hate, I'll take it. Yeah, go ahead. I like, I like the Nintendo first party games. Um, all right, it's time to do our little meta segment where we just uh, tell you guys to how you can help us and how we can help you. We have a bunch of new shirts coming in. Hopefully, by the end of the year, they better get the damn mugs in there. We've got the um, I don't party shirts with George Washington. We've got those coming in black. What is it? What does that say? It's still rolling. Okay. An hour and three minutes. Um, let's see here. Don't forget to check out our game deals. We've got a lot of game deals right now for the holiday season. It's just techsyndicate.com slash game deals. And uh, we, we're going to help you guys, you know, get a good deal on a game. And if you guys really value the content, you know, check out there first. And also, you know, you get a deal and it helps us a little bit. Uh, also, if you um, really value our videos, please consider becoming a member of Tech Support. The way this works is you can go to our website and we're about to put this on there. Um, you can pay just a few dollars a month and we will get that money. It'll help us be less reliant upon the Google ads and that sort of thing. Uh, it'll help us make our content better. It'll help us, you know, hire some new people, go to different events, um, travel, maybe go to, you know, Taipei, Computex, that sort of thing, and be less reliant on sponsors um, as a whole. So it'll really help. And plus, you will uh, get a little tech support logo that'll go on your name and everyone on the website will know that you are a member of tech support. So this is that. also available if you use the Bitcoin thing or chip in. You just have to email us and let us know so we can do it manually. Yep, we'll get it, we'll get it done for you guys. And thank you guys, especially all our new tech support members. You guys are awesome. We will see you next time.